Hello YouTube, Tim here. This is going to be basically the first build along that I've done in quite a while. I told you about it a few days ago. What it was was approximately a 50 inch long piece of Schedule 40 PVC, 3 quarter inch diameter. I flattened it and then I tapered the handle laterally. I'll show you that. So I did to the handle, as you can see, side to side. Here are the fades. Looks pretty good. And all I'm going to do right now is I have about five inches on each side marked off for the recurves. I'm going to heat them and then I'm going to use a board to flatten them and form them into nice, you know, sias. They're a little shorter than I usually make them, mostly because I want this bow to be very light. And that'll just allow me to keep as much of the limb as possible bending. If I take too much, then too much bending is going to go on in the inner limb. It's not going to affect the draw weight substantially, but still, this is what I wanted to accomplish, and I think it'll make the bow look very graceful. Less Asiatic, a little bit more just you know, graceful, like I said. So, first of all, let's heat this, then we can worry about flattening it. I have a, the 2x4 over there for that. So, I almost always, when I'm doing the tips, I turn the heat down. This is about eh, two-thirds of the way up. Make sure you keep on rotating it and don't focus on any one section. You want to keep moving. Definitely don't hit the sides, although you, there's no problem in hitting the uh, or heating the end. Just make sure you don't hit the sides because right at the end, along the sides, it is a very strong tendency to split if it's overheated. the heat gun over to a different socket. There we go. You'll see me do little figure eights, little curly cues, back and forths. Anything works as long as you're not concentrating too much in one spot. Every once in a while, just go back and heat the end from a slightly greater distance. Eventually, you'll notice it start to round, and that's when you can go and really focus, start to heat the sides. Before that point, I wouldn't do it. I really wouldn't do it. But then you'll notice that point when it starts to open up a little bit. Okay, it's puffing. Very good. So now carefully, from a distance, and now, very carefully, start heating the sides. Because now it's round, it's very unlikely that it's going to split unless you really overheat it massively. So let's just continue heating until we've heated every bit up until the line that I drew. If you want at this point, you could increase the heat a little bit, just to speed things up. If you're just going back and forth over longer stretches, what I find is you're going to want to do one end to the other end, and then one third, or one quarter, three quarters, and then back and forth like so. Otherwise, the very ends of your motion here and there, they tend to get heated more, less in the center. So if you focus in the center half as much, you know, you spend half your time only heating the center areas, it spreads the heat more evenly. Okay. That should be perfect. 
This is the same 2x4 that I used to flatten the limbs, and it works just fine for this. This bow, now I'm just going to take it like so, curve it to whatever stage I like, looking at it to make sure it's fairly straight, and then pressing down. Simple as pie. You can always adjust it later, so don't worry. If you kink it a lot, again, you're going to heat the, the uh, transition. You're going to heat this area between the limb and the sia, so it's not going to be a big deal if it's not perfect. Don't feel bad. You're going to adjust it. I do try and make them fairly flat, but you can leave them more round. Sometimes I leave them very round near the, the limb and very sharp and pointy at the tip. Just depends. Nothing is better than any other way. It's all just aesthetics. And the performance of the bow, the way that this will affect it, is minimal. And I mean relative, if you're going to taper it more or not. So we just wait for it to cool. If you're interested in speeding that up, like I said before, you can move it along there and then move here. So now you have new area of wood below it and a new area of wood above it so it can upheat. That's about all you can do. If you had metal and you were doing this on metal, that would suck the heat right out of this and it would cool off very quickly. If you misted it with water or you sprayed cold, cold air or cold water down the tube, you could probably get it to cool off really fast. But there's no real need to. Just wait a minute and you'll be done. If you had a need to do this more quickly, you can just take two boards and clamp it. No problem. But we've got plenty of time. In case you're wondering how this happened, I wasn't making a string, but I was heating a bit of paracord just like I would as if I were finishing a string loop, and I got a little bit of the hot melted nylon on my skin. It burned like a mother. I tell you true. It probably amounted to a very, very tiny second degree burn. Really unpleasant. And it's just healing up now, so thought I'd share that since you pro some people might wonder, hey, what'd you do to injure yourself now, Tim? Perfect. Now what you can do is sight down the, the bow limb, see if it's straight. That looks pretty darn good. Okay. If it weren't good enough, if it weren't straight enough, what I'd do is I'd rest it here and I'd push in the, the way needed to correct it, but that's pretty darn good. We're going to still have another opportunity to heat it here, and then we can correct it even more. But, for one limb, that's pretty good. If you leave them almost like this, and then just taper the ends here, it looks kind of like a banana. You see what I mean with a curve? So, call these banana seas. Let's go and heat the other side in the same manner. Again, turning down the heat. Excuse me, about two uh, to about two thirds. Much of the time, I end up scraping off the letters or sanding them off, but because this bow is going to have a dark finish, I'm just leaving the text on there. It's going to be hidden. And a good amount of it will be rubbed off by the solvent dye when I, I use that.
Okay, I'm going to crank the heat up and focus on the end just to make sure it's soft enough. You can see it's still a little bit stiff. Very good. Same as before. Angle it forward at the desired angle and curvature. And then simply flatten. Rinse, lather, repeat, right? Pretty easy stuff. These basic PVC bows are fairly easy to make, fairly quick. They do take a little bit of practice, but once you've gotten that practice, it's satisfying and simple. Really nice to make some good bows out of. PVC is a pretty exceptional material. I haven't talked too much about it here on the actual videos, but if you checked out my blog, PVC or uh, goldenhordebows.blogspot.com. One of the posts I made there was a quick reference guide which pertains to all forms of archery. I talk about material densities and I collect a lot of information from various sources like the traditional Boyer's Bible, etc., etc. And that includes comparisons of material properties. You find out that PVC is roughly the same density as horn or sinew and it has roughly the same elastic and compressive properties. It's not quite as good as either horn or sinew but it compares very favorably. So in a lot of ways, a PVC bow is a lot like a horn bow, just without the wood in between. And the, the main function of the wood is to hold together the sinew and the horn in a horn bow. It does provide some stiffness, but since it's mostly near, it's relatively thin and near the neutral bending plane, that is, well, that's a whole subject for another video, the wood itself is mostly subject to shear stresses. One half of it's being pulled in one direction, one half of it's pulled in another. But the main function is just to hold the two ends together. The sinew and the horn do disproportionate amounts of work. That's why even though they're very high mass and density relative to wood, a horn bow can outperform, in many cases, a comparable wood bow particularly when they're short. They can be drawn to just distances that you couldn't even imagine drawing a short wood bow to. 48 inch long uh, hickory bows, for example, I've seen you know wide and thin drawn to 28 inches, but that's pretty extreme. With a horn bow, that's, that's a, a normal or even a long size bow. Nothing out of the ordinary. And with a PVC bow, likewise, 48 inches is a perfectly good length. Where PVC does fall a little bit short is probably hysteresis. It tends to lose a little bit more energy in the flexing. But, again, that's probably not way out of line with what sinew and horn do. Although I haven't any particular data to that effect. It's just my suspicion. Okay, I'm going to run this under the water real quickly. Okay, checking for straightness. I'm satisfied with this. Looks good. All right. So now, there you go. From one side to the other side. I'm just set it down and you can see the whole thing. You might say, well, Tim, you didn't use a jig, so how do you know that the tips are set forward at exactly the same angle? This won't be an issue because we're going to reheat near the bases to make the transition more gradual and elegant, and at that point we can correct. But if you're really interested in getting it right, right off the go, what I do is I use something long and flat like the side of my countertop, and I set it down. If it's horizontal, you know, if, if the bow is perfectly parallel to the surface, then you know that you've got the same depth. In this case, just eyeballing it, I can tell that the this sear 
is not quite as sharply recurved as the other sia. But I can go and correct that since we're going to reheat. I'm not worried. That's just what you do. So right there, you can see, all we need to do is I'm going to drill a hole for the knock, and the bow is done, essentially. At that point, it's just a matter of finishing it and decorating it. I'm going to show all that, but those are subjects for another video. So thank you for watching YouTube.